Hello everyone, welcome to our virtual health hut. Today, we will be discussing sexual health advocacy. My name is Estelle and assisting me with our video is Christina. Both of us are peer health educators at Student Health Services. Before we get started with the presentation, I will link below in the description a pre-survey that you can fill out. If you have any questions regarding student health services or want to make an appointment, please call 562-985-4771 and do not forget to follow us on all of our socials. By the end of this lesson, students will be able to identify three techniques that can be used to advocate for their own sexual health, define the five Ps, and recognize the sexual health resources that are offered at Student Health Services. A quick disclaimer is that I will be discussing sensitive topics such as sexual health and access to healthcare. If you need any resources, you can call CAPS at 562-985-4001. Did you know that one in four Americans skip medical care because of cost? And about 40% of Americans report skipping a recommended medical test or treatment? Now, let's discuss why individuals are not seeking health care. A study was conducted to figure out the reason, and what they found were that people believe that their illness or symptoms will improve over time and that there are barriers to medical care, such as health insurance, high cost, and time constraints. But why is it important to seek health care? Well, one of the answers is health, health screenings. Health screenings are medical tests that doctors use to check for diseases and health conditions. Your doctor may recommend certain health screenings based on age, family history, and sex. Primary prevention is important. Before this presentation, I will be discussing secondary prevention. It is important to remember that primary prevention is always key. Listed on the slide are some of the more common health screenings, such as an annual physical exam, mammograms, pap smears, STI testing, testicular exams, and the prostate-specific antigen test. It is very important to be performing breast and testicular self-exams if you are not going to go to the doctor. And an annual physical exam is important so that your doctor can make sure that your overall health is okay. Next, we're gonna be discussing sexual history. According to the CDC, a sexual history allows doctors to provide high quality patient care by appropriately assessing and screening individuals for a broad range of sexual health concerns. Now, you can pause the video, but how many of you have heard about the phrase, the five Ps? If you have no idea, that is perfectly okay. I'm here to explain. The five Ps are used to ask questions in assessing your sexual history. They stand for partners, practices, prevention of pregnancy, past history of STI, and protection from STI. First, we're gonna start off with partners. To assess the risk of getting an STI, it is important to be honest about how many sexual partners you have. With practice, it is important to provide information about the sexual practices that you are having so that you'll be able to guide the provider in assessing the patient risk and provide risk reduction strategies. There are certain STIs that are site specific and some that are not which includes vaginal, anal, and oral sex. Prevention of pregnancy is asked to determine whether the patient or patient's partner could be at risk for pregnancy. Past history of STI deals with you and your provider discussing any STIs you may have had in the past. And with protection from STI, it deals with your provider determining an appropriate risk reduction plan. 
It is best to remember that not all of these terms may apply to you, but they are very useful to know. Also, it is very important that you are transparent with your provider so that they can assess you in the best way possible. Now, I want you to take a few minutes to think about the experiences you may have had going to the doctor's office. Feel free to pause the video and have this conversation with your friends and family. Now I will give you three tips you can use to advocate for yourself the next time you're at the doctor. The first tip is to find the right doctor. If you're able to choose your provider, you should find someone that you trust. If there's a doctor that is not taking you seriously or downplaying your concerns, understand your rights to change providers. If you would like more information on how to choose providers, it will be in the description below. The next tip is to be prepared. Make a list of topics you wanna to cover at your appointment. You should take charge of your health. Write down questions you have before, during, and after. And remember that it's okay to ask for a second opinion. You should also have someone you trust be by your side and have them advocate on your behalf if needed. The last tip is to have confidence. Be assertive when discussing your medical history. Communicate your concerns, take notes, and do not be afraid to call before and after your appointment for clarifications. Now that we have learned ways to advocate for ourselves, let's implement it. Listed on the screen is a role play scenario, and I want you to imagine that you are the patient. And the scene goes as follows. Patient A goes to the doctor and explains that they're experiencing pain in their right leg. The doctor proceeds to ask questions, but does not physically see any signs that there is pain. Patient A continues to explain the symptoms they have been feeling, but the doctor still cannot diagnose them. Now my question to you is, what steps should the patient take to advocate for themselves? I want you to use the different tips that I've given in the previous slides to answer this question. Here is an overview of the ways to advocate for yourself if at the doctor and feel free to take a screenshot. Next, I'll be going over health insurance. So health insurance in the United States helps protect you from high medical care costs. It's essentially an agreement between you and your insurance company. Things to keep in mind are that you should know if you have coverage. That can look like being on your parents' plan or even employee coverage. If you have insurance, it is important to take time to read your policy and learn what your insurance covers. And if you have any questions, be sure to call your insurance company. If you do not have health insurance, you can make an appointment to see the referral nurse or case manager at Student Health Services. The number is 562 985-4771, and there will also be helpful resources in the description below. Now I will be going over the resources that Student Health Services offer. CSLB offers a wide array of programs and services such as primary care visits, reproductive health visits, birth control 101 workshops, gender affirming medical services, a pharmacy, STI testing and counseling, pregnancy options counseling, and family pact. For primary care visits, SHS has licensed medical providers that are made up of physicians, physician assistants, nurse practitioners, and nurses. It is good to note that all visits for primary care services are free, and they cover basic medical care, treatment, and more. For reproductive health visits, they include breast examinations, PAP test, STI testing, and pelvic exams. For birth control 101 workshops, they are free and taught by peer educators. Topics discussed are birth control methods, STIs, HIV, safe sex tips, and more. Gender-affirming medical services 
include hormone therapy, pharmacy services, and laboratory tests. It is good to note that Student Health Services provides these options at reduced prices. And at the pharmacy, SHS provides over-the-counter and prescription medication also at reduced prices. For STI testing and counseling, the testing that are available are chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, and HIV. And for counseling, there are health educators available to discuss your diagnosis, safer sex, and next steps. If you would like to know more information, the website for SHS will be provided in the description below. In the previous slide, I stated that the Family Pact is a service offered by SHS, but now I will go into more detail. Family Pact is a program through the state of California that provides free family planning and services to low-income individuals who do not have health insurance or who need to keep their services confidential. The following services are covered through Family Pact. Condoms, birth control pills, STI testing and treatment, reproductive health exams, Plan B slash emergency contraception, pregnancy testing and counseling, HIV testing, and much more. To see if you qualify, call 562-985-4771 to schedule a 10-minute enrollment eligibility appointment. Here are some helpful resources and websites and numbers that are outside of CSLB, such as Plant Parenthood, the Long Beach Department of Health and Human Services, the LGBTQ Center of Long Beach, the Trevor Project, and the Sexual Health Youth Advoca Advocacy Coalition. So I know that we covered a lot of topics during this presentation, but I want you to take some time to journal. If you want, I want you to pause the video and write these questions down and think about them. The first question is, write down in a couple of short sentences, some affirmations for empowerment anytime you need to seek preventative care or see a provider. Some examples could be, I will be okay, I am brave, I am strong, and I choose positive and nurturing thoughts. The second question is to list three things that you're going to do to take charge of your sexual health. These could include questions you will ask and health screenings you will sign up for. Before we close, I would like you all to fill out this post survey. I would like to leave you all with a quote by the Plant Parenthood Federation of America. Young people have the right to the information and skills they need to protect their health. Here are my sources. I hope that we have learned something new today and are able to implement these tips. If you would like to know more, contact Student Health Services our number is on the slide. Thank you very much.